Hi everybody and welcome to Once Upon a Scarf. This channel is all about vintage scarves, who designed them, how to find great ones, and how to wear them. Today we have a guest appearance by a scarf lover I think you all will recognize. In this video she gives a demo on how to tie a scarf that is predictably enchanting. We also delve into a mystery disc by Hollywood's greatest costume designer and explore why a flutter around your face is absolutely captivating. I'm the author of two classic books on vintage fashion, Secondhand Chic and It's Vintage Darling. I'm a huge fan of the luxury, affordability, and style potential of great vintage scarves. I'm so happy to share what I know with you. To begin, in 1951, Audrey Hepburn was an unknown, a Belgian actress who had spent World War II in Holland learning how to dance ballet and working for the Dutch resistance efforts against the Nazis. After the war, she came to Hollywood's attention thanks to the French writer Colette, a producer of the Broadway show Gigi, in which Audrey starred. Audrey was not built like your typical Hollywood goddess, with pin-up proportions. Instead, she was extraordinarily slender, a holdover of starvation rations during the war years. But her gentle manner, fawn-like features, and understated seduction, even as an unknown, meant she was destined for stardom in a way that's obvious here, in a personality screen test by Paramount Pictures. Now, let's step back to introduce the other heroine of this video, this mysterious lady wearing sunglasses indoors, well before this lady picked up the habit. This is the legendary and aptly named Edith Head, chieftain of costume design at Paramount, winner of eight Oscars, wizard of fit and proportion, and quite frankly, a star maker. She had the fearsome respect of equally fearsome directors who relied on her to turn their leading ladies into femme fatale, fashion plates, and princesses. Head was not cozy, nor collaborative with rivals, but she was a force of nature in a town filled with egos that required build up and tear down as needed. Such was her lasting influence that she's even a cartoon avatar in The Incredibles. In this clip, Head leads us through another of Audrey's screen tests, this one focusing on movement. And it's here we get our demo on how to tie a scarf while looking like a jewelry box princess. So we made her a simple costume so she wouldn't look different. And you know why she's rolling up the sleeves and all of these things? It's because in the picture she had to look casual, informal, and we felt due to the heat of Roman summer, a girl would really do this sort of thing. Now watch and see what she does now because this is what we call demonstrating through a test what is going to happen in a picture. It helps the director and it helps an actress. Would you like to see that again? I thought so. I can barely tie a scarf knot, looking in a mirror, both hands concentrating to the utmost. Here, Hepburn does it while twirling in a circle and emitting 10,000 watt charisma. This footage was a test for Roman Holiday, the film that made her a star. The little neckerchief has an important role in the picture, showing the secret Princess Audrey in casual civilian mode as she jaunts around Rome with Gregory Peck. Now, at least one source has Edith Head claiming that Audrey wore this scarf in part to disguise her prominent collarbones. I went to the horse's mouth and found nothing but praise. In fact, what Head did say was this. She was a little girl with the poise of the Duchess of Windsor. Her figure and flair told me at once, here was a girl who'd been born to make designers happy. The lesson here may be, scarves can disguise, but they can equally attract. And in this clip, Audrey gives a masterclass. She demonstrates very clearly how and when to wear a bow at the neck without looking something like this. In this footage, the whole point is that it flutters, drawing attention to the face in the same way that this feather draws attention of Lady Birdies. Why this fascinator has its name and why Chinese opera stars wear hair ornaments that jiggle and sway. 
It's all about getting the eye excited without the eye knowing why it's excited. So what's the best way to wear a bow at the neck? Silly question. It's clearly jaunting around Rome on a Vespa with Gregory Peck riding shotgun. If you can't manage that, think about occasions when the wind will be up on a spring walk, in an open-top car, boat, or scooter while dancing. Let the ruffling begin and have some fun with the slippery little square tied into a cute knot. Bonus points if you can do it while twirling. And that's today's scarf story. I hope you enjoyed it. Please press the usual buttons to see more.